Time is 5.50, like as in 0550. It is way too freaking early to be awake. An early rise is often a necessity for team members as they prepare for a day of press work at Kennedy Space Center. With so many cameras around, it's usually in one's best interest to be presentable. After a quick meal and packing of equipment that will be needed for the day's activities, it's a quick drive across the 405 for entry into the Space Center. To gain access to the secure facility, badges must be presented to KSC guards at checkpoints along the roadways. We'd like to show you these checkpoints, but the officials carrying sizable firearms prohibit documentation of the stations. After arriving at the KSC press area, members of the team are free to move within certain perimeters of the site as they please. The KSC press area has been in use since the days of Apollo in the late 1960s. It was here that hundreds gathered to watch the mighty Saturn V rockets lift off from launch pads 39A and 39B, just three and four miles away respectively. Since 1981, the site serves as a front row seat for those who come here to witness and document the launches of the space shuttle fleet. The open expanse of the press area provides an outstanding view all around. Just to the north of site is the massive Vehicle Assembly Building, known to all space enthusiasts as the VAB. The shuttle hangars, known as the Orbiter Processing Facilities, or OPFs, are also visible. Launch pads 39A and 39B tower over the Florida brush in the distance, with the top of the shuttle stack visible behind the massive launch pad structures. Perhaps the most notable landmark on this site is the famous countdown clock, which can be seen on television ticking through countdowns and recording mission elapsed time during shuttle missions. Lining the banks of the Banana River, members of the media gather around this clock and the adjacent flag stand to witness launches of the space shuttle. The large central media center houses offices of KSC public affairs personnel, the extensive media library, and workstations for members of the press. From here, the team can monitor mission events, gather information regarding hardware and processing, and obtain NASA images and footage for use in articles, video segments, and databases. Adjacent to the Media Center is the News Center Annex, where foreign media gather for their work while on assignment here at KSC. Next to these buildings is the Briefing Center, where mission controllers and managers give briefings to reporters and other assembled members of the press. In all, this press area serves as a hub for all mission-related press activities. It is from here that members of the media branch out around the Space Center to carry out their assigned task. Media activities typically follow the same timeline as any space shuttle mission. It begins months ahead of the mission's launch with the arrival of the mission payload here at Kennedy Space Center's Shuttle Landing Facility or SLF. Working from a pre-planned area, members of the press set up camera equipment for thorough documentation of the arrival of the mission payload. Here, the team can record still imagery and video footage of the payload as it's offloaded from the aircraft for exclusive use on nasaspaceflight.com's L2 database. From the SLF, the payload will be moved to the Space Station Processing Facility, or SSPF, in the KSC Industrial Area. Here, it will undergo final processing ahead of its launch to the International Space Station. As the time to launch draws near, the press will be brought into the SSPF for up-close documentation of mission payloads and related hardware. Here, they will be briefed on the planned operations and capabilities of the payloads, and are given photo and video opportunities for coverage. With the mission payload being prepared at the Space Center, the hardware for the launch vehicle begins to arrive at the Florida Space Coast for final assembly in preparation for liftoff. The first elements to arrive at Kennedy Space Center are the multiple segments that will make up the twin solid rocket boosters.
These segments arrive by rail from the ATK processing facilities in Utah many months before the mission is scheduled to launch. And while the segments themselves are not visible inside their rail car canisters, the press are afforded the opportunity to document the train's arrival at KSC. Following a few months behind the SRBs, the massive external tank arrives in Florida. Traveling by barge from the Michoud Assembly Facility in Louisiana, the tank travels up the Banana River to KSC's Turn Basin, located just south of the VAB. This Turn Basin is directly adjacent to the KSC press area, so provided members of the media have obtained qualifications and permissions far enough in advance, they are afforded the spectacular opportunity to cover the arrival and offloading of the butterscotch-colored bullet-shaped external tank. While the tank already appears massive on television and in photographs, these images fail to convey the true scale of this massive element of the shuttle stack. Seen here being offloaded from its protective seafaring hangar, the Pegasus Barge, the tank dwarfs not only the technicians moving it to the VAB, but members of the press who have gathered in awe to document the event. 